Hey guys, Nick here, and today we're gonna have a build video. So today we're gonna do a build on the Terran Sirius Command Dreadnought Cruiser. So yeah, it's gonna be a little different to my Justice Seer build. Yeah, it's gonna be a little more damage oriented, just for more your average, see your average day to day content. But yeah, it's basically everything bar your know, maybe like a 10 minute core fares or something like that. But as shown here, I did a Hive Space Elite, a HSE, with a few of my friends. We have Dwayne, we have Rob, we have CJ, and we have Mikey. If, uh, if you're in into the streams or, or watch a few of the Twitch, you'll probably know all those names. That's uh, Dwayne's on uh, Twitch streams all the time and the YouTube. That's Rob at Exploding, who's a moderator for myself. Casual Sab. CJ's a big... Trizander supporter and the moderator for Trizander and Mikey is that's Mad Dog Mikey on Twitch and YouTube. If you see him more around the uh, around Augie streams. So guys, today's video I'm just gonna demonstrate the build in a Hive Space Elite to start, and then I'll go over the build after. Hey okay, guys, so I'll just do a little narration of like my thought process. So at the start, there isn't too many pre buffs. So it could just as you can see on my tray three, I have activated a track fire and threatening stance i've hit my emergency powder engines but other than that i've just have my pass so we'll see here i'm gonna fly in as i'm the tank i'm gonna fly straight into the middle because i want to get threat on everything i'm hitting my fleets i'm hitting my gravity well to try and control everything a bit of damage and attack your net drones with the lance but you see how i'm not hitting dprm the point of that is so I can have two rotations of universal consoles. So on my other builds, I might have two or three and a bit more defensive. See how I'm, I'm a little low, but I'm hesitating. I'm like, okay, I'm not dying. I'm fighting it. You know, I'm a bit, you know, I'm, I'm going okay. So I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding. But now, see, I'm noticing, okay, I'm getting a little low. Boom, DPRM. And I was like, ooh, I don't have Javanite on. So I was like, I'm trying to whack Javanite. But now the threat's starting to drop because that things are dying so it's yeah i got through it you know you, just by rotating my consoles correctly gave myself about 40 seconds of basically big defensive resistance bonuses so it got me through with that and valdor just passives and just everything from the build working in unison but other than that guys it's pretty uh standard hive space elite things um yeah we gripped everything in the middle and we just basically worked our way out Anyway, guys, I'm just going to let this run. As I let this run, I'm going to jump to my game. So, I can skip. We can skip ahead. So, yeah, you know, the pickles go down. And no, another note. I want to. I'm just going to re re uh, rewind a little bit. So, see here when here. On the side, do we? No, Mikey. Oh, Mikey's side. Okay. So, the reasoning why Rob asked if we had a science is because of the Queen's feedback pulse, which would basically insta-kill any energy weapon build. A science that, um, with the Captain ability, sub-nucleonic beam, can t strip that buff away, or that, you know, take that buff away, so it doesn't do feedback pulse, or it goes off for like a second, and then you can take it away. So, it basically negates the one real deadly mechanic at the end of Hive Space Elite. So if you uh, guys, if you're having troubles at the end, just remember, bring a science, they can sub-nuke, and you'll have a better time. All right, I'm going to jump to the game. We need to find the right thing. All right, guys, the build. So the Terrian Sirius Command Dreadnought Cruiser. So pretty, I won't say standard stuff, but uh, just an adjustment from my norm, like a real heavy build. So we are running five... Bubble, anti-proton beam arrays, crit D damage and damage times fours across the the front and the back. We are running the lockbox bubble omni. We are running the lobby bubble omni with the lobby bubble console for the two piece bonus, which is the extra refraction and the refraction still one hundred percent bonus damage. For the build, I'm for my ETM, my entwined tactical matrices 
starship trait for my uptime on my fire at will. I am running the Dark Matter Torpedo as my torpedo to be fired because that is also running the two-piece bonus with the Lorca's custom fire controls, which is, I think it's crit severity yeah, on a kill. It's not on a kill. On a crit, plus one crit severity, stacking to 25 times, so plus 25 crit severity pretty quickly. To my deflector, impulse, warp core shield. So I say this as I'm running Discovery 3-piece or Disco 3-piece and the competitive engines, but so I'm running the non baronic matter deflector array from discovery legends reputation i am running the prevailing innervated impulse engines from the competitive reputation i am running the mycelial harmonic anti antimatter core from discovery legends reputation and i'm running the tilly's review pending modified shield from the discovery legends reputation so i'm running this three piece for one the two piece for the plus 120% hull regeneration, there's no better tank two-piece in the game. And the three-piece, your first attack against each target fires a bolt of mycelial energy at them, dealing almost 6,000 electrical damage, scaling with your maximum hull. So the more hull you have, the more it will do. That works in unison really well with tanking because with history, remember, the starship trait and threatening stance, you're just general skill your hull is going to go well over 200,000 on any, basically any tank. So you'll have maximum efficiency on that three piece. And to our devices, guys. So now we have our deuterium surplus. They just help us move around. Basically a secondary, we call it evasive maneuvers in a can. It's from our, it's, it's the defense contract mission at the bottom of the beta quadrant. You got to do the mission specters before that if you haven't unlocked it. There's a, um, I have a video on how to unlock it. Uh, we have our temple negotiator. So, this is from our. If you don't have it, it's from the Delta recruitment event, and by getting all the Iconian tech on one character, and that will give you this on account unlock. Yeah, it's fifty percent recharge reduced on your bridge officer powers. So, if you're missing a boiler proc or something, it's a nice thing to hit and just get your buffs up back to cooldown. Kobayashi Maru from the event. Yeah, off, on the off chance, you get the buff of the 10% bonus damage, 10 hull, 20 resistance rating, 20 shield, or 20 speed and turn rate. So nice little passive bonuses if you get the right one. And an advanced battery energy amplifier so for the 20% bonus energy damage for 10 seconds and the 30 starship shield pen. So just little bits to help out during any sort of TFO. All right, to our universal consoles, we have our Fakiri Torment Engine. This is to help my Entropic Rider buff, uh, my Entropic Rider from Tempops to help that do a bit more damage. It's to help the Bubble War Flaction do a bit more damage, um, to help the Dark Matter do a bit more damage the, on the Dark Matter Dissolution, to help my Chemocyte Lace Weaponry do a bit more damage. They're yeah, just to help my basically my dots because. This sort of tanking is I always refer to as dot tanking. So it's there to buff your dots and help you grab that aggro a bit quicker. Uh, next up, we have our Locus Custom Fire Controls. So this is for the mainly for the crit chance, the weapon power, and the starship shield pen. But the added bonus of the two-piece, which I mentioned before with the torpedo, the on-crit one severity buff for 20 seconds, stacking up to 25 times. So basically, if you have a high crit chance build, you're going to get that stacked up really quickly and never drop it. All right, our to our consoles, so our engineering consoles. So our bio neural infusion circuits. So this is, I just think this is a great console for every single build if you have the low before it. We have plus 29.5 hull capacity, plus 29.5 control expertise, and plus 26.2% crit severity. I just think it's great stats for, every, for tanking especially. Uh, hull, plus hull cap is great. Plus control X is great because of gravity well. You need to be able to control things and yeah, control X is the stat for gravity well. And plus crit severity. Always nice to be able to hit, you know, for our crits to be that much more severe. And for one of our defensive clickies, adaptive emergency systems. So it's not like a health regen, but it's 20, 50 bonus all damage resistance rating for 30 seconds. So if you can see here my resting damage resistance rating, not quite as high as my some of my other videos on tanking, 44, 20, 40, 20, 40, 
But if we hit our adaptive emergency, you can see it here, boom. 60, 60, 60, 50, 60. So I've spiked up 20% in some, 20 to 25% in others. So my damage resistance rating has spiked quite a bit. And as well, it's a damage bonus. So it's 50 bonus all damage resistance rating and 30 all damage resistance. Uh, 30. 50 damage resistance rating and 30 bonus all damage. So it's you're doing gonna do more damage, so hopefully you can kill them while you're fighting, and you're gonna be tankier, so it keeps you going. And the great part about this console is it's a counter lock now if you have any of the flagship variants, so our uh, legendary Ver verity, our legendary border skew, or our legendary um, scimitar, or the engineering versions of those ships. So I, it's the Sonjur, um, I don't know, I, I couldn't name you the other, the uh, Klingon variants, but it's our in engineering version of the flagships. Gets you this on Count Unlock or the legendary versions of them. And it's a great console. It's affected by Uncon, so it's not running anymore, but while it's running, you can hit unconventional systems and you'll gain the cool you'll gain its cooldown back as it's running. So it's a really nice console because you can have quite a high uptime on it. Uh, next up, our dynamic power redistributor module. So this is just for it. I like the passives, but I don't think about them at all. I think of it this as the best oh shit clicky in the game for the plus 40 damage. So plus 40 bonus damage. The plus 100 bonus damage resistance rating. So the adaptive emergency is plus 50. The pl the DPRM, the dynamic power redistributor module, is plus 100. So it's double. And you get 500 hull regen. So naturally, I have 340 hull repair. This will double that. Like, look, my hull regen goes to 840 from 340. So I'm just re repairing, repairing, repairing. And it's just great as that moment of you need to keep yourself alive. And so, and that is from the Atlas Temporal, I think it's, and I know it's the Atlas, the prototype Dreadnought. The Shield absorb Absorbative Frequency Generator. I have to like sound my words out right now. I have a bit of a sore tongue, guys. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt the video. I, I know something, I've cut my tongue on the bottom of it, so my... my me, as I'm trying to sound these out, trying to speak a little slower, so I'm not like having a lisp and speaking too quickly. So the shield absorb absorptive frequency generator. So when below 90% on any shield facing 2.5 chance per shot for all energy weapons to restore shields for 200% of outgoing damage. So in that hive I showed over half, I think it was about 60% or 70%. Of the healing that I got from that on that run total was from this console so huge portion and it's only from the tier 3 Valdor so you can if you don't have the legendary Valdor you can up the you can pick up the tier 3 for 75,000 dilithium or if you have the dilithium discount from the fleets next up we have tachyonetron so this is a bit more of a DPS oriented tank but Tachyon net drones, the value of them is just too good not to bring on every single build I have. Um, it's still bringing crit chance. It's still bringing crit severity. And the bonuses of negative damage resistance rating and the shields offline from the clicky, just too good to ignore. So I run that on almost all my builds now because, you know, we can knock the shields offline, you can debuff them, and you just makes things really easy. And they've got great passive stats. It's not like it's useless passive stats. The passive stats are quite good. Next up, we have the Baul Linked Sentry Co Coordination Matrix. So this is to pair with the two-piece with the Lobi Omni. But So that was the increased refraction damage from the two-piece. But it's for the 35 anti-proton damage because we're using anti-proton weapons. And the plus 3.9 hull capacity. And then... Yeah, removing any incoming control effect makes you immune to control effects for five seconds. So it's a nice little remove effect, which is always nice on a tank. But basically there for the increased anti-proton damage to help you generate more threat. Uh, the flagship tactical commute computer. So the only reason I paired this was because fire cycling haste for damage is nice. It's a team buff. But mainly I liked it. I was like, okay, you know, 
what could I run? I could run, you know, Domino, or I could run something like the M6 computer. But I thought, I'll run the flagship computer for this build because it's the tank. I can then also get the two-piece with the adaptive emergency systems because I'm going to be running that. And then I'll get I'll get the extra crit chance and the flight turn rate while I'm at it. So I thought that was a nice addition. So the flagship tactical computer. So this is from the tactical variant of the flagships. So, um, yeah, same again. Instead of the odd, the, uh, the engineering version, you'll get the tactical version of the flagship or the legendary verity, the legendary border skew or the legendary scimitar. Last but not least for our consoles, I'm running four times anti-proton vulnerability locators from the Fleet Spire. So I thought about doing isomags for this build, but I thought on the other side, I want to run universals. I run. A, I want to run Lobby. So it makes more sense to me to run exploiters or locators. I'm still, you know, maybe we'll trial out both more in the future. But right now I'm thinking the locators are a better bet just to you know keep up uh, some of our bonuses and some of our stacks just to keep that up as the tank because I'm I'm not a DPS build 100%. I'm not running Terran Goodbye. I'm not running Universal Design. So I don't have that crit chance for my traits as much. So I'll get it passively. And last but not least, I wouldn't say the main reason I did this build, but a big you know reason why I've done it so soon is the Elite Type 7... Elite... <laughs> Type 7 Shuttlecraft. So, the Elite Type 7 is from the new Awani... Oh no, I just want to reference this one more. It's from the Awani... Uh, a A H W A H N E E. It's... I can say it, but I don't know how to spell it. The Awani Command Carrier. So, this is from the 14th Anniversary Bundle. Uh, you can buy it separately. You don't have to buy the bundle. And this is a ship... I, I think I'm going to recommend to every single person. It's kind of like the Bozeman for the Tachyonet drones, for the ship, for the trade. This is a... I'd say is a beast of a ship. The pets are amazing. Like, they are the best pets in the game, bar none. The trait is great for trying to, if you want to help boost up energy weapons. And the console itself is going to be meta on every single energy weapon build once they actually fix the console that because currently the Awani console is overriding firing modes so say you want to do cannon scatter volley three you put that on someone you'll give them rapid fire one instead of them having their cannon scatter volley three which we're having issues with in our trying to boost up spencer situations but anyway guys so highly recommend the Awani if you don't have it take a look at it the pets are amazing console's amazing the trade's amazing and i think the ship itself is amazing because it can look like a constellation so but if you haven't seen my support video guys take a look at my support video it's using a build on the iwani and it looks like a constellation or like the stargazer that picard captained and i just think it looked awesome um so have a look at those iwani pets all right guys so the skills um i'm not going to talk about the skill tree but i can just i am going to show it off so it's 27 points in tack, 5 in Psy, 14 in, in Engineering. This is my standard tank setup. It works really well for me. So if you want to take a look, pause this video. I see my camera's blocking it, so I'll just move it a little bit. So guys, if you want to see it, take a screenshot, pause it, and that's my skill tree for my tanks. And we're running Intel and Temporal. One, because I don't really need Miracle Worker to survive. So I would rather have the flanking damage and the intel fleet. And on the secondary side, temporal ops is great because of plus 50 EPG and the entropic rider. So when firing a projectile, 10% chance for the damage. When when firing energy weapon, 2.5% of the chance. But with the refractions, they proc even more. So the weapons, the entropic rider is propped off the refractions and with the refractions if you see with if you run bubbles they just are everywhere so you're just procking it more and more and more so it's quite nice and yeah so that's my skills that's my specializations that i'm running for my tank if you were having issues with survivability i would swap to miracle worker because you're getting more hull regen you're getting more healing from just everything you know bonus 30 percent bonus healing 30 percent bonus damage you know, bonus damage resistance rating when using a heal. You know, the cleansing, immune twos, they're just great tank stats if you need the extra 
you know, defensiveness. All right, to my personal space rate. So same again, guys. This is a more damage-oriented tank. So it's not going to be running plot armor. It's not going to be running honored dead. Um, it's not running repair crews or context is for kings. So it's just running more damage oriented. So a good day to die. Base, so basically this is allowing us to use our go down fighting at any point. Uh, with our intelligent agent attache. You can see right now we're having a few problems clicking things with the trait list. There has been a few bugs now that they've uh, added the search filter. But... Yeah, so be it. So, Intelligent Agent Attach. So this is yeah, a nice one to, for recharging your captain ability. So, on weapon crit strikes, restore 2% of captain ability. So, that's your, like, say you're a tactical captain. That's your attack pattern alpha. That's your go down fighting. That's your tactical fleet. That's your tactical initiative and your vulnerability assessment sweep. So, this is a, so say tactical fleet. That's a five minute cooldown. 2% of a five minute cooldown is quite a lot on every crit strike. So you're going to, instead of having to wait, so, you know, you use it for 30 seconds, it's a five minute cooldown on the rip. Instead of having to wait four and a half minutes to get it back after it runs out, you'll get it back a lot sooner. All right, next up is beam training. So pretty standard 5% bonus beam weapon damage. Uh, I just said beam, beam weapon damage. Um, I'm a silly goose today, guys. So apologize. Um, this should be superior. Uh, you can pick that up from K13, but it, you, you can see the point on what I'm trying to make with this build. This is a damage-oriented tank. It will does survive Hive if you have the right group. It will survive most content. It's probably your odd core fares or slower Hive space elite where you're going to have a few issues, but for most content, you'll have no issues running this tank. Next up, we have self-modulating fire on Outgoing crit hits your energy weapons and projectiles gain 50% shield penetration for 10 seconds. Can trigger once every 45 seconds. So just basically, this is allowing like a spike to go through. So like I hit alpha, DPRM, and just it'll help me spike at the start of like an encounter to help me grab threat and, you know, do some more damage. Uh, next up, we have fleet coordinator. 2% bonus all damage per teammate, self included. So up to 10%. So just basically raw damage numbers next up we have fragment of ai tech so fragment of ai tech i like as a two-parter i would run it just for the plus 50 control but it has plus energy weapon damage based on your control so for the amount of control i have i'm getting 21.7 energy weapon damage based on my control expertise so it's extra damage to my energy weapons extra control to make my gravity well a little bit stronger you know, I'm, you know, I'm happy with those. And so next up, we have Fleet ta fleet Tactician. So fleet, ta fleet Tactician is when you hit your Tactical Fleet, you get 125 flight speed, 125 turn rate, and 100 resistance to slow. So I can show you up here. So we're just we're flying along naturally, not doing anything. We'll hit Tac Fleet. And, you know, I'm not that much faster, but... Fleet Tactician is running, and your entire team will get it too. So it helps you, you know, go a little bit quicker. Next up, Terran targeting system. So 15 crit severity. So pretty, I'd say self-explanatory there. Um, when we crit, our crits are doing more damage, and we're happy. Uh, next up, unconventional systems. Using a control bridge officer ability, minus 7% re recharge to universal consoles. So if you haven't seen universe, uh, if you haven't seen unconventional systems in action, so say I hit that, it's got a two minute cooldown. Can we see the little ticker going down? Um, eject warp plasma is a unconventional systems proc. So I'll hit un boom. And if you could see it just gone, it drops. That was a minus seven seconds on its duration or its cooldown. So it got us a bit back. So um, if you can see on my bar, I have tractor beam. That's an unconventional systems proc. I have jam target sensors. That's an unconventional systems proc. I have un emit unstable warp bubble and emit, uh, not emit, eject warp plasma. All unconventional systems procs. So it's helping me get my universal consoles back quicker. And last but not least, the Boimler effect. So this is a lobby trait. So the rest of all are these from either lockbox or their standard captain traits. The Boimler effect is a lobby trait, so it's the most expensive trait on this build. 
for personal space traits. So 17.5% to recover the recharge of all your bridge offices up to their shared cooldown. So what that means is, say I hit Fire at Will or I hit Chemosite, boom. See, I just got a Boimler proc. See, it was at like 20 seconds and it just went to like 12. That's the shared cooldown of Chemosite Lace Weaponry. So it's just, boom, it's gone instantly to its shared cooldown. Like I can do the same here, boom. I Another Boimler proc. So 20 seconds and the shared cooldown is 20. So it's just instantly gone to 20. So, you know, can show again. Boom, Boimler proc. So I'm just instantly on a lot. I'm just getting lucky on a lot of these. I'm hitting the ability and Boimler's kicking in. Like, I'm getting that lucky Boimler proc. And my abilities, see here, no Boimler proc. So I'm like, maybe I can hit ability. Maybe I can hit ability. Boom, Boimler proc'd. And my ability went down to its global cooldown. So it's the... It's basically the best cooldown reduction method in the game now because, in, you know, in the past you'd have to run duty officers or you'd have to run, you know, photonic officer. But now with the Boimler effect, you know, you're just hitting your abilities, boom, your, your things are cooling themselves down. And then you, f you feed that in with intelligent agent attache, you know, your bridge officer is getting cooled down quicker, your captain abilities are getting cooled down quicker, and your starship traits don't need it, so they're just, you know, helping you along. But speaking of starship traits, to our starship traits. We have Emergency Weapon Cycle from the Arbiter, the Kurak, the Mogai, the Legendary Avenger. So, uh, it's a few sources of it now. Um, on Emergency Power to Weapons, so Emergency Power to Weapons, this ability here. Uh, if you hit that, we have minus 50 weapon power cost for 30 seconds and 20 seconds, 20% 20 of fire cycling haste for energy weapons. So, the global cooldown of these are 15 seconds. So I don't know if I can get a... See, I'm not, I'm not getting Boimler Proc, so it's 25, but shared for, like, if you had a Burgess Powder Engines, it's 15. But see that? I had it running for a few seconds, Boimler Proc, and it's 100% uptime, so we have 100% uptime on our wet minus power cost and our 20% fire cycling hay. So basically, once you have enough cooldown reduction, you'll have that up 100% of the time. Next up, not really a damage trait, but I just think it's a great tank trait. It's a great team trait. So I really encourage everybody to go look at Unified Engineering from the Baran or the Quoj. Is two team and self for 15 seconds on activating emergency power or aux, <laughs> on auxiliary to structural integrity or any command bridge officer ability. So that's the reason why I have auxiliary power to structural integrity field one. So see, so yeah, it's went, you know, it it procs my unified engineering. So I sit there, and that's a pretty short cooldown too. So I have a hundred percent uptime when running unified engineering, and it's providing all these stats to the team, and that does stack. So if you have five of these, you'll have five of those five times all of those stats. I have next. I have ship of the line. So this is where I'm going to go into the damage traits a bit more. So emergency power abilities grant twenty percent severity, stacking. You know, each stack after is 10%. So basically, we sit here we and we cycle through emergency power to weapons and engines. See, see how I have 203 right now? In a few seconds, when I can activate emergency power to engines, you'll see here soon that my crit chance will go up. Sorry, my crit chance. My crit severity will go up 10%. So we hit emergency power to engines. Boom. 213 instead of 203. So you just sit there and cycle through two emergency power two abilities, and you just sit there and stack up crit severity up to a bonus of 50% increase. All right, next up we have superior area denial. When activating fire at will, grants fire at will and scatter volley to your hangar pets, and upgrades your energy weapons for 20 seconds to targets minus 30 all damage resistance rating. So this build is actually running pets. They do have fire at will, so it's not exactly needed, but it might give them a little bit more uptime on their fire at will. So that's a bonus. So see here, I hit fire at will, boom, gave, gave them fire at will and scatter volley. So it's a little buff to your hanger pets and it's a buff to your debuff, or your debuffing, your negative debuff resistance rating to the enemies. All right, next up, the epitome, uh, I'd say the epitome, the, you know, it's your best in slot tank trait yeah you know, you've got your etm and you've got your emergency weapon cycle but you know each tank no matter what's going to be running history will remember for the plus threat generation so for, 
For each foe that damages you, gain one stack of history. Rule. Remember, 30 stacks maximum, which grants you the following. Plus, so by 30 stacks, plus 30 damage, plus 30 hull regen, plus 30 maximum hull, and plus 300 threat generation. So this is equivalent to, it's more than threatening stance. So, you know, with 300% from history, remember, from 200% from threatening stance, I think from an extra 100 from a track fire. So that's like eight, what's, I'm trying to think, that's not 800, that's plus 600 threat generation there. And there's other methods of maybe you're running a Dark Hukans with a Delta, attack pattern Delta. Maybe you're running Ion Storm Generator. Maybe you're running old school Colas Research Lab for plus threat. So, but this is the, like the main now source of threat now is history will remember because it's just a great tank. There's great, those are great tank stats. You know, and it's great tanking because it's as you're taking damage in, you're getting stacks, and yeah, you're happy days. Next up, we have overpowered and overgunned on beam and cannon special firing mode, minus 15 weapon or power cost for 9.8 seconds. So, um, as I've said in my last videos and earlier on, weapon power is a damage modifier for energy weapons. So, the more damage we do, the more threat we generate. Yeah, and that happier as a tank. So instead of draining from like say a hundred to eighty-five, say we'll just go, we'll go on the fifteen. You know, you might you're not you're not gonna drain. You're gonna drain fifteen less power. So you might only drain from a hundred to ninety. So you're you're gonna do not, you have ninety power instead of a hundred, but you're gonna do more damage because you're not draining as much. And the fire cycling haste. So you know instead of firing say one shot every second, you're gonna fire. You know, what if it's at 1.125 shots every one second, if that's, you know, if you want to work on, so there'd be certain numbers in a way of explaining it a little better, but in that theory of, you know, instead of firing one to one, you're going to be firing a little bit quicker. As you can hear my Discord making noises. Pro, pro YouTuber here, everybody. Uh, last but not least, for the Starship Traits. Entwine tactical matrices. When activating torpedo spread, gain fire at will. When activating fire at will, cannon scatter volley, gain torpedo spread. So this is our method of extending fire at will. So basically, you hit fire at will, you have your natural fire at will for 10 seconds. When that finishes, you activate torpedo spread. That gives you the next fire at will for 10 seconds. And that's the 20% or the 20 seconds you need for your normal fire at will to be back up. And that's 100% uptime on fire at will. To our space reputation, 20 crit severity. So these are just standard, you know, bonus to our stats. Radiant detonation matrix. So this is a plus threat when I run on my tanks. So, you know, it's just helped me grab threat. 2.5% chance for radiation damage to in one kilometer radius of a target. So say you're a group of spheres and this goes off. Yeah, you know, just more damage in that area to help you generate threat. Tyler's duality. Crit chance based on hull capacity, maximum at 200,000 hull. But so because of we're a tank, we're increasing our hull as we go further into a task force operation, our TFO. We'll get more hull, so we'll maximize this out. So we're going to gain 7.5% crit severity, so happy days. We have our precision. We have, so 5% crit hit chance, so flat. So unlike Tyler's, where it's based on your hull capacity, your maximum hull capacity, you just get five flat if no matter the ship. So if you're running this on a squishy ship, like say a, a ship without without a lot of hull, like a maybe a Terran Eagle, you're not going to have quite as much effectiveness from this trait. And last but not least, we have energy refrigerator. Receive 9.4% of your outgoing damage as hull heal to you. So the more damage we do, the more healing comes back in, and you know, the more we stay alive. And our active space reputation. So these are basically my stock standards, um, except for QSM. I'm not running that as a tank because I don't want to cloak myself. Uh, this is just a Tetron AOE, so tet refractoring Tetron Cascade. Our anti-time for a little bubble of damage. Our tethered non-baronic asteroid. Our biomolecular shield generator. This is quite a good defensive, so if you're running a tank and you're a bit worried about your health, uh, this is a really good one to click. 
to keep yourself alive because plus shield resistance rating and plus shield regeneration and it's quite actually a lot doesn't look like a lot but it's quite good so you have to so get in the habit of using that everybody and deploy sensor interference platform uh this is not it's something you do not want to use like this is the very last resort oh shit i'm gonna die i just need to hit something you know it creates a taunt platform so you hit that and taunts it will try and taunt for you, but this is a very last, because you won't have any threat per second. So this will take it from you. Your threat will just go to the floor. So say when it runs out, any DPS, so say if they're doing like a million damage, you're doing 100k, they're going to rip threat throw you and probably die. So this is a very last case scenario, hit this. Um, if not, stay away from it. And I'm back, guys. So shirt change been a few hours since the uh first half of the segment of this video uh planned on finishing it earlier before i went out to dinner with a friend and didn't get time to do it because i was distracted and we ended up getting a few uh record runs in um myself i uh, moved up on the isc table i know everybody cares yay um got a new friend of ours at star trek online got him a bunch of new isc records we all worked on our supports, which I think are always fun. A bit of work on our tanks. So, you know, a bit more content for, for the channel, maybe. Um, you never know. Uh, but anyway, guys, to the stations. So, basically, the golden rule, or the, like, how to build a tank for my, myself. Um, yeah, Suppression Barrage 3. You're going to have your Fire at Wall extension modes. We're going to have our Fire at Wall with our torpedo spread to keep our Fire at Wall up 100% of the time. Then you've got your choice for your tactical abilities. You run beta so attack pattern beta attack pattern delta or do you run chemo satellites weaponry for a bit more damage so being that this is a damage oriented tank i'm run i ran with chemo satellites weaponry um next up i'll go from left to right we have narrow sensor bands miracle worker ability because i thought this is a miracle worker part ship so i try and get some miracle worker in um for the bonus to weapon damage and the accuracy, so it's basically the bonus to weapon damage that I was looking for. Jam target sensors is for the unconventional systems proc. Gravity well is for controlling things, you know, into a certain area to help control a map. Emergency powder engines is for our evasive maneuvers reset. Auxiliary power destruction integrity field is for our unified engineering proc. Eject Warp Plasma is our unconventional systems proc, and the most broken ability on this build, Suppression Barrage 3, for the minus 50% outgoing damage to that target. And it says your weapon suppress targets for 20 seconds. Just so you know, guys, that's 100% uptime. You hit, you suppress for 20, and Suppression Barrage 3's global cooldown is 20. So if you have enough cooldown, that's 100% uptime. You don't need to run the, you don't need to run Vanguard Specialist to make this have a higher uptime and better cooldowns. You know, it's already got 100% uptime, so it's not needed. Vanguard Specialist is not needed for Suppression Barrage. Next up, we have Emergency Power to Weapons. So this is for our Emergency Weapon Cycle trait to be the proc for that, plus for the general plus 10% bonus energy weapon damage. So more damage our energy weapon does, the more threat they generate, the more threat we have, and the better off we are. Last engineering ability, emit unstable warp bubble. So same as emit eject warp plasma is a unconventional systems proc. And last but not least, detractor beam. Detractor beam is an unconventional systems proc. For this build, for some builds of mine, it, you know, it's a proc for multiple traits or abilities, but for this build it is just here for an unconventional systems proc. Because a big part about the bursty part of like some moments I want my universal consoles, and so that means I need unconventional systems proc to make sure they're off their cooldowns. All right, last but not least, guys, our duty officers. So, nice and simple, we have our, I, I don't even want to try and pronounce that, our crit chance energy weapon officer, which I got from the KDF recruitment event. So, nice and simple, 4% chance of plus 1% crit chance buff to self, stacking up to three times, so that's three a chance at 3% more crit severity. Vincent Cash, 25% chance in using firing mode one 
or two to take you to two or three instead. So I'm using Fire at Will one. It might take you to Fire at Will two. So a little bit more damage on my Fire at Will. So more damage on my Fire at Will. More Theft Generation. Happy days. Emergency Con Hologram. So this is our Evasive Maneuvers reset. So this is from the Phoenix Store, guys. If you don't have this, it's a big one. You want to go pick that one up because if you see, I hit Evasive Maneuvers. We'll hit it. Five, four, three, two, and our one. So it'll be on cooldown in a second for 40-something seconds. We're going to hit Evasive Maneuvers. Boom. Off cooldown. And I can use it again. So instead of a 45-second cooldown, it's, you know, the five, or the five seconds or so to have the interaction after it's come off its uh, active. And boom, it's back up. So you basically have Evasive Maneuvers a, a good majority of the time. Next up, we have a Crit Severity Officer. So this is a 3% chance... 10, 10 crit severity buff to self, stacking up to 3 times. So, with enough crit chance, you have 30 plus, 30% 30 increased severity. So, nice, nice. And an 8 of 47. So, these Borg Dofs are nowhere near needed. They're just what I had to fill in the last few slots of my bridge officer abilities. So, don't feel pressured to go and get them. They are nice, but they aren't, ga they aren't like game changing, they aren't build changing. So, don't feel... Professional YouTuber who is half asleep. Um, I could say thank you for the sub. I missed your name there. San Sazbolic George, I think it was. <laughs> thank you for the sub while I'm uh, on the video. I, that should really be off. But pro, uh, pro streamer here, guys. Pro Australian... Uh, sorry. Pro Australian YouTuber right here, guys. So, sorry. Uh, ten, we have a 5% chance at Attack Pattern Delta and a 10% chance with command abilities to get attack button delta. So I'm using a few attack abilities. I'm using one command ability, but it gives us a chance at attack button delta, which is 30 damage resistance rating to ourself or negative 30 damage resistance rating to our enemies if they're hitting us. So it's helpful if it does go off. Not going to change this build drastically if it does or it doesn't, but it's nice if it does. And last but not least for our bridge officer, not our bridge officer, our duty officers, our 30, oh sorry, our 43 or 47. 15% chance to reduce the command of bridge officer abilities by 50%. So basically, yeah, if it procs, it's going to bring your command bridge officer abilities to their global cooldown. And the command on the other, the other side, 30% chance of command to bring your science bridge officer abilities to their global cooldown so it helps you like if you don't have a boimler proc a, bo a doff like this might get you that cooldown low enough so then like that might kick your boimler in and get everything back to its global cooldown and keep everything going so just to help us fill in the gaps just in case anyway guys that will be today's video um on the terran sirius command dreadnought cruiser fun little ship uh, not fun little but fun tank ship that i was enjoying flying today so i thought um we'll yeah put a video out ha we'll have a look at it and um yeah uh guys uh, just a final note um for those watching this tonight as it's uploading tomorrow morning if you're still awake i i will uh adventure to try and sleep here soon so i can get a couple hours sleep before that stream uh, i will be opening for a one thousand my one thousand sub celebration stream i'm going to be opening up a thousand infinity lock boxes on the live server tomorrow and we'll be giving away a ship uh sorry we'll be giving away a ship we'll be giving away a t6 coupon thanks to my good friend intriguing and we'll be giving away a lobby ship and potentially some more secondary items you know some outfits some weapon packs some trait boxes you know we'll see what happens tomorrow as the mood strikes and we'll see what happens but anyway guys if you like tonight's video i know it's a long one so thank you for those who made it all the way through um if you like this video please like comment and subscribe i'm going to say thank you good night and we'll see you all around in star trek online bye